Uh, first of all, categories, criteria, and context. I want to say a little bit about how the goalposts are moving in the field of uh, foreign credential recognition, and uh, thereby the difficulties in getting a handle on the processes involved. Uh, some of the variables we can use to assess the issue of foreign credential recognition, some of the determinants, some of the variables that we know are important in determining uh, the, um, the process of foreign credential recognition and more broadly labor market integration, um, some of the costs involved in non-recognition of foreign credentials, and then finally some of the, uh, the knowledge needed, the further research and the further issues that need to be addressed in this, uh, in this field. So categories, criteria, and contexts. Uh, it's important to know that over the last decade, uh, or two decades, there's been a lot of shift in uh, the ways in which immigrants are integrating into the labor market, the types of immigrants who are coming, um, and the labor markets themselves that they are integrating into. Um, so there's been a significant shift away from Ontario and towards other provinces, and the provincial jurisdictions that immigrants are going to do matter because labor market regulation, professional accreditation, and so forth are provincial jurisdictions. So the big shift away from Ontario to further west. Um, provincial variation alongside that in the types of immigration channels that people are using. So enormous use of the provincial nominee program in Manitoba, um, more use of uh, entrepreneurship and investor categories in, in BC, um, and heavy use of federal skilled worker and um, family unification classes in, in Ontario. So the shift has also been a shift in the types of programs used. Uh, changing human capital of immigrants themselves and of the Canadian-born um, peers in the labor market they are alongside. And of course, the changing policy context, both in terms of immigration programs, which I'll come back to, but also in terms of foreign credential recognition um, frameworks that are in place both federally and provincially. So in all of these ways, over the last decade, the, the ground has shifted considerably under this, uh, under this issue. Um, and of course, the, the data that we're using often doesn't reflect those changes. Uh, so various variables. How do we uh, get a handle on the, uh, the patterns of and the um, um, dimensions of, the magnitude of uh, foreign credential recognition or non-recognition? Well, one way to do this is to look at, uh, look at data on field mismatch. Look at the fields in which people were educated and look at the fields in which they're now working. Now, this is a relatively weak form of, uh, of uh, determining the extent of the problem because you can be trained in uh, as a civil engineer, but then work in an engineering practice in a far more junior position. You could be trained in accountancy, but work as a, as a bookkeeper. Um, so that you could be working in your field without necessarily having your credentials recognized. But this is one way of, um, of identifying the issue. And we know, for example, that 46% of those with a Canadian degree worked in their field of study. Only 20, and then what we want, what we, one of the points we want to make here is that you need to differentiate different immigrant groups, less than a quarter of those with a degree um, from, South, from the South Asian region are working in their field of study. So there's not only a differential between immigrants and Canadian born in this respect, there's also differentiation within uh, the population of immigrants. Education mismatch. Um, so what are you qualified for? At what level are you qualified? And at what level, of, uh, what level is required for the job that you're doing? So if we look, for example, at the percentage of university graduates who are working in management and professional occupations, and we compare that for 1996 and 2006, you see that um, for both uh, male and female recent immigrants, the percentage is far lower than for Canadian born, but it's actually declined for male immigrants. So it's gone from 50% in those kinds of occupations in 1996 to 43% in 2006. So there's actually a, over that period, by that measure, there's a decline in the education match, at least in the upper ends of the, the labor market. Uh, we can look at earnings as well. Uh, if we look, for example, at the, the main labor market cohort, age 25 to 64, who are in full year, full-time employment from the 2006 census, we see a differential, and particularly a differential, between those immigrants who are internationally educated and those who are either Canadian born with post-secondary education or immigrants who are then educated in Canada. So they could be childhood immigrants, for example. But the real differential is between those who are educated abroad and those who are educated in Canada. 
Um, finally, we could look at unemployment, perhaps the most egregious form of um, misuse of human capital in the sense that it is not being used at all in the, in the labor market. And here we can look particularly at the impact of the recession over the last five years. So if we chart um, unemployment rates um, from March 2006, when the labor force survey started to ask immigration questions, all the way through to November 2014, and the red lines are female, the blue lines are male, uh, the dotted lines are immigrants, the solid lines are Canadian born. You can see the, you can see the signal of the recession right here. Uh, and you can see the way in which um, the hit in terms of unemployment rates was taken by, by immigrants. And the differential between immigrants, the differential in the unemployment rates between immigrants and Canadian born uh, widened at that point, stayed wide, um, and for, for female immigrants, for, for male immigrants, it has somewhat narrowed in the last year or so. Uh, this is up to November 2014. But for female immigrants, it has stayed significantly wide. Um, so that gap widened and it stayed wide for, for women uh, uh, in the labor market. So this is the most um, egregious, as I say, form of uh, non-use of human capital in the form of unemployment. What then are the determinants? What does the literature point to in terms of determinants of labor market outcomes and credential recognition um, and advancement into uh, the kinds of employment that people are trained for? Um, one point would be country or region of origin. This is a very what's often used in the literature. And if we look, for example, if we take unemployment rates and we look at immigrants from different source countries, we see a huge range. We see all of them, in this case, above the Canadian rate of unemployment for de university degree holders, uh, but a wide variation in, in, in unemployment rates depending on where people have come from. We could look at place of education. This is also really significant. Um, so immigrant, this is from ELSIC, from the Longitudinal Survey of Immigrants to Canada. So this is somewhat dated. This is from the early 2000s. Immigrants who okay, obtained Canadian credentials after arrival were far more likely uh, to have found employment related to their field of study um, than those who were, were entering the labor market with a, with a foreign credential. Um, language abilities, there's a clear positive correlation between language abilities and there's different ways of measuring this, self-assessed or tested, and various labor market outcome measures, earnings, employment, uh, training, uh, match between training and employment, and so forth. Field of study, it actually varies depending on what broad area of, of, of study and work people are entering. So for example, 30, about a third of immigrants who were educated in health, social science, and education fields worked in regulated occupations in their, in their field compared with almost half of uh, Canadian-born uh, university graduates in those fields. Um, but if we look at those educated in natural and applied sciences, the, the figures are actually slightly better uh, for immigrants in those fields than, than Canadian born in those fields. So field of study uh, matters a lot in terms of access to, to regulated professions. Um, time of arrival and length of residency. We know, of course, that um, the, the duration of uh, uh, residency in the country matters in terms of access to labor markets, but it also matters when you arrived. And John mentioned the the scarring effect of arriving during a, um, a, uh, a recession, and that's clear in the, in the data as well and in, in existing studies. Immigration category, uh, we've seen through the use of IMDB data uh, that the that immigration categories can have a significant effect and that skill assessed immigrants, economic immigrants do tend to do somewhat better, although that pattern isn't universal. Um, gender is the, the big uh, underlying sort of bedrock variable in any labor market analysis. And if we look at uh, degree holders and the average incomes, uh, this is from the 2006 census. Je uh, yes, there are differentials, big differentials between um, immigrants and non-immigrants, but gender is a huge uh, underlying variable as well. Um, and visible minority discrimination. Um, we know from the studies of people like Phil Oriopoulos with the uh, CV studies where they send out standardized CVs and then change them slightly to look at employer responses. We know that amongst employers there are issues in terms of how they read um, names, how they read the, the source of qualifications, 
Um, and they've shown this through uh, responsiveness to, uh, to, to, uh, stu to CVs that are sent out in the thousands and then, um, and then assessed. So we know that there, is, there are issues of visible minority discrimination going on. Uh, prior work experience, it's actually a negative correlation, um, according to one study that used ELSIC, uh, to have prior work experience in your field in terms of employment match. Which, so clearly prior work experience, never mind credentials, but prior work experience is not being adequately um, addressed. Uh, location in Canada. Uh, you're actually, significant, as an immigrant, you're significantly less likely to be working in your field if you're in uh, the major CMAs, particularly Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, than if you settle elsewhere. Sorry, I just lost my clock. Okay. Um, and that is partly because these are more competitive labor markets, it's also because people going to smaller centers are going there because of the work that they've been drawn to. So there are a variety of reasons, but the, but the, the, the picture is worse in the, major, in the major centers. What are the costs of this? Well, there have been studies that have looked at the, uh, the lost value of um, underemployed immigrants. Um, one study by Jeffrey Wrights and his colleagues put the figure at about five billion in 96 and over 11 billion by 2006. And that's losses due to lower earnings relative to credentials and lower access to, to skilled employment. Okay, so finally, what do we need to know? Um, much of the, many of the determinants that I've mentioned there are, um, are well, what I've shown of them has been taking each determinant individually. In some cases, studies control for other variables, but they're taken individually, and in part this is because of the type of data that we have available. Some things are available from ELSIC, some things are available from the census, some things are available from the labor force survey, but we don't have great data, and we have deteriorating data, in part because the kind of surveys that John mentioned uh, being done by Statistics Canada are, are not being done now, uh, and because of the, the lower quality of the, the census come National Household Survey. Um, secondly, qualitate, we need more qualitative studies in specific professional fields and for specific immigrant groups where particular issues, particular access issues are, um, are relevant. Uh, we need to attend to exclusion within fields of employment. So you can have nurses who are registered as nurses, but perhaps as uh, practical nurses, um, or who are assigned, say, to uh, long-term care facilities rather than acute care uh, contexts. So there can be discrimination and exclusion within a field of practice. That is something that could be attended to. We don't know much about the intergenerational impacts of poor employment outcomes. That is something that the, the next generation is coming of age now, um, and we need to understand what's happened, how the, the, the impacts of these poor labor market outcomes have a long-term intergenerational impact. We need to assess, assess the effects of new services. A lot, there's been a lot going on in the last decade in foreign credential recognition, in pre-departure orientation and training. We don't know much about what the impact of that has been. We, don't, we, we need to track the impact of the recession, which had major labor market impacts, and we need to know what the long-term effects of those who arrived at that time or those who were made unemployed at that time. And then finally, we need to track changing patterns of immigration and the effects of those on from credential recognition and labor market outcomes, and changing immigration programs. So if we look at the new express entry program, for example, and this is not something, of course, that was covered in the literature that we were reviewing, but if we look at how that is changing the weight given to different um, qualities of, of that immigrants are presenting themselves with, a huge amount of onus is being placed. This is from the, the Economist magazine last week. Um, a huge amount of emphasis is now being placed on job offers and employer preferences. And we know from the, the CV studies and so on that employers are not necessarily that um, effective in, in uh, properly assessing CVs, credentials, um, and uh, may have uh, prejudices in terms, of, um, in, terms of origin, in terms of people's places of origin. Um, so we need to think very carefully about what this is going to do to, to foreign credential recognition um, and the matching of, of immigrants with, with uh, appropriate employment in the future. Um, and just because employers are taking people out of the pool, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're matching them with their skills. Uh, they may be taking people who are heavily overqualified for the jobs that they are plucking them out to match them with. Uh, 
Um, okay, I, I look forward to your questions later. I will leave it there. I realize I've gone over time. I'll stop again.